MES and ERP or MES versus ERP take zero. All right. So as part of the 12 days of MES, which is a take on the 12 days of Christmas today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer like one of the most common questions, which is what is actually the difference between MES and ERP? I'm also going to talk about how they work together. There's a very, very common misunderstanding in the market, which is that uh, ERP could be the center of your digital universe. Um, and in fact, a lot of ERP vendors try to sell ERP as the center of your business uh, universe, which it is not. Uh, it's kind of a punchline, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain today why it isn't. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at um, ERP and MES. All right. So first, before we get started, let's quickly go over what it is that all manufacturers, all industry have in common. So all manufacturers, all industry, they sell stuff. They plan to manufacture that stuff. They execute the manufacturing of that stuff. They monitor and control their plants. They monitor and control individual assets. They inventory their stuff. They ship their stuff. They get paid for their stuff and they pay their bills, including labor and the maintenance on their equipment, operating costs. And then they do it all over again. Okay. So a lot of what we teach about is unified namespace being in the middle of that universe. There's a lot of really fancy slides out there that kind of explain ERP, MES, SCADA, but I, wa I wanted to talk about a component in here. I actually like this slide a lot. I don't know whose it is, but it's th this is the decision loop slide. So it talks about all the individual levels. So you'll notice what we have is these have really been merged. In industry four, we really talk about these uh, together. So PLC and edge. So level zero and one are kind of together when we're talking about industry four. Okay. So we're not, not when we're talking about automation, but we're talking about industry four. So uh, those decision loops out on the edge are sub-second decision loops. They're basically process control decision loops. That you, we have PID loops that are uh, data, analyzing data, and then reacting to that data in sub-second intervals. Okay. The control systems, so the supervised control and data acquisition system, that's the layer directly above your eight. Those decision loops are in the second and sub-second sub loop. So depending upon how fast your SCADA system can react to data changes and then draw visualizations on a screen, the decision loop could be in the sub-second. For example, it could be like I see a high inrush current on a motor contactor closing. We manage our alarms inside of the SCADA system. We pick up, we've broken the alarm threshold. And within a sub-second, we are indicating on the screen that we are in an alarm in a sub-second interval. All right. Manufacturing operations, so MOM or manufacturing execution, MES, those decision loops are in shifts. They're shift to shift. They're also week to week. There's missing a decision loop here, but there's a week to week, shift to shift, hour by hour, minutes, and second decision loops. They are, they're not sub-second. So like here's a really good example in the MES layer. So, so that, you know, if you look at the four core the core four functions of MES, and there could be there's potentially hundreds of functions, but the core four is scheduling, work order management, OEE, and downtime tracking. OEE is is not calculated at the second interval. It, OEE oftentimes is calculated at the 60 second interval. So every 60 seconds, we slice up all the events over the last 60 seconds, and we do a new calculation. We also do that at sometimes we do that in the five minute interval. We do that in the hourly interval. When you look at shift OEE. We're doing that in a shift by shift decision loop, right? So we're not making a decision about the performance of a shift within the shift decision loop in the sub second that that's every eight hours. All right. When we get to ERP, okay, the decision loop at the ERP layer is months, weeks, days. It's also quarter by quarter. It's also year by year, year over year. It is. And I would say it actually goes down to shift by shift. So there, the decision loop would be ship by ship. There, there could be data or data and information that lives inside the ERP that's gotten to the ERP through transactions that is within the, the shift by shift interval. All right. So very important to understand. So when people are arguing that we're going to execute, you know, we're going to run MES, our MES functions 
live inside the ERP layer, and that's the center of our universe. It, and remember, what is MES? MES is is the place where we take the planned manufacturing and we execute it. We make it happen. It's where we make our money. ERP is where we're converting a sales order into the planning of manufacturing, okay, in general, right? So very important to keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fundamental differences. Here, let me increase the size of this font for you guys. We'll go 16 here. We'll go 16 here. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Let's start with ERP. So ERP is basically where we go from sales to planning. Okay, planning, uh, ordering raw materials, um, making sure we have the correct packaging we need. We have the right down to we have the paper to print our labels on. All right, that's sales. Sales to planning is what happens in the ERP layer. All right, they operate on transaction intervals, not event-based intervals, but transaction-based intervals. So generally, what that means is we are packaging together many events into a transaction. And that data is streaming up from our digital infrastructure into the ERP system, okay? And we're doing that at the transaction level. So oftentimes a transaction might be executed when a specific ma a manufacturing event takes place, like I am, we're a role of work in progress. So in the, in the example of our virtual factory, we have a flexible packager that prints, laminates, slits, and creates and makes bags. The, an ERP transaction might be, the, the ERP transaction is I am going to consume a raw material at my printing press. On the end of the production line, I am going to start a brand new roll that will have printed film on it. The next events, the next events inside the ERP system are going to be when that roll is created, and that could be hours later. Between, between, the, gener between the consumption of the raw material and the, and the creation, the generation of the work in progress, maybe three hours of a printing process, okay? We won't see another update in the ERP system in general until another manufacturing event that is business related. So what happens to all those other events if we wanna have insight into all those other events? Well, they're happening and being tracked in real time in the MES layer. So every, every, Every linear foot, every time the, the roll is accumulating a linear foot of printed film that's going to go into the roll we've created and work in progress, that lives in the manufacturing execution system because the manufacturing execution system is real time. The ERP system is transactional. Okay, when we're all done generating the roll, we're going to execute a transaction that's going to have basically a series of events that we put together. The role was consumed at this time three hours ago, and it was this role from this ID, from this lot, from this vendor, and this role was generated three hours later, and it's got this sticker on it with this lot number, with this whip number, and it goes to this job. That transaction will be fired when the role is generated. That is a transaction that gets inserted into ERP, all right? In ERP, we have we do master data model, the business structure and the definitions. So like our bill of materials, that is every time I make this product, it's a static thing. Every time I make this product, this is the bill of materials for making this product that lives inside of ERP on the on the what assets we have that lives inside the ERP how much we paid for those assets, what the operating costs of those assets are. That lives inside the ERP. We basically coalesce together all the tra transactions that we collect from our operations to do that inside of ERP. However, in the manufacturing execution layer, we are merging those business definitions with the operations events. So for example, in the manufacturing execution layer, we may have a failure of an asset that is defined inside the ERP. And that failure might be a hydraulic pump went bad, okay? So M CMMS, um, maintenance management systems, maintenance management system, because it's real time, is a, is, lives in the MES layer. It's on the operational side of the business. It is, CMMS is a function of, it's a business function that operates and that lives in operations. So when we consume the brand new, when we, when we, we have to go to the ERP system to grab the inventory of the hydraulic pump that's sitting on the shelf that we're going to use, 
but and then we are and in the CMMS layer, we are going to we are going to assign that new hydraulic pump to that asset, and then we are going to have a transaction back to the ERP system where we have merged together the operational event, the rising edge of the failure, the falling edge of the failure, the rising edge of the restart, okay? We're going to merge together all those events with the consumption of the inventory that lives inside the ERP, and then we're going to assign that cost to the asset that lives in the master data model, okay? Capacity planning and job sequencing. So before we ever do a job in the manufacturing execution layer, we are going to do our capacity planning. How much should we be able to produce on any given asset at any given time? In which order should we produce things that that way we are running more than we are changing over? And then in the manufacturing execution layer, we are consuming the schedule that came from capacity planning and job sequencing. And then we are executing the manufacturing work orders. That is the key. That's the ID upon which all the individual second level, sub-second, minute level events are being tied to. So that when we fire our transaction, we say this work order is complete. We are sending a transaction with the work order to the ERP saying it's complete. If I ever wanted to see the genealogy of every operations event that happened for that work order, that's going to happen down here in the manufacturing execution system. Okay. I, what I'm, what I'm, but what's going to happen is we're tracking it in real time. We're coalescing all the events and then we are transacting up into the ERP system. Okay. All right. ERP function is the optimization of resource utilization. So we want to make sure that we are leveraging our assets inside of our business effectively. And we try to optimize that in the ERP system. We do the analysis for optimization in the ERP system. For example, changeovers. Changeovers for, for specific products. So if I have a printing press and I, and I print three different, I, I print three products on my printing press. I print product A, B, and C. There is a changeover time if I go from A to B and when I go from A to C and there's a changeover time from B to C and there's a changeover time from C to A and from B to A right? There's a change over time. Within the ERP system, let's say I have, I have an upcoming work order of I got to produce n number of widgets of, of product A, n number of widgets of product B, n number of product, uh, widgets of product C. In the ERP system is where we are analyzing our performance over time and saying, in which order should I schedule those things? Okay. And that's just one example of resource utilization, the optimization of it. In the ERP system, we are use, we do supply chain management. But in the MES system is where we are doing the real-time production and consumption of work in progress and finished goods. The individual operational events in real time for work in progress and finished goods on both the consumption of raw material work in progress and the production of work in progress and finished goods. And then last but not least, in the ERP system is where financials are taking place. So that is where we assign cost and revenue to our assets, then to our divisions, then to our businesses. All right. That is the difference between ERP and MES. And one of the things that I find fascinating, there's a really fascinating component here, is that this is the domain of IT and this is the domain of operations, OT. Okay. And why do we have those domains? You notice where the split is. The split is at the MES layer. Oftentimes, the manufacturing execution layer is half owned by IT and half owned by OT. It's no secret that the reason the va that one of the reasons the vast majority of manufacturers don't have digital manufacturing execution systems is because of the that is where the conflict between IT and OT takes place. Okay, if you go and you look, supervisor control HMI PLC Edge is wholly owned by the OT group, but the ERP layer, your data centers, the carpeted side of the business is wholly owned by the IT. It's, it's no wonder that only about 10% of all manufacturers have digital manufacturing execution systems. And the reason why is because that's the place where IT and OT converge and conflict. Okay. So with that, that is ERP and MES. It's the difference between ERP and MES. And it is just a quick introduction into how they work with one another, ERP and MES, all right? In the MES Bootcamp Accelerator, which we're doing next month, the seventh, I think starting January 7th and going through the first week in March, Zach's gonna take you guys through 
the MES boot camp, which I did a couple of years ago, and he's he's going to do a cohort group and take you guys through that, where you'll go through the boot camp. We will talk in one of the sessions, actually two of the sessions. I talk a little bit more about this, actually a lot of bit more about this very specific subject, and we actually show how it is that MES and ERP integrate together using business connectors that specialize in taking transactional data and merging them with real-time data. All right, with that, like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.